Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the initial bidding and get this started. I'm not going to worry about the special abilities of the companies and spe spelling them all out. You can look them up online or see them during play. But they'll come up as I'm talking. Um, okay, so what I've learned in most of the XX games that have miners, and this one's no exception, is that getting these guys is pretty important. They're very valuable. They're not as important as they are in 1835, but they're still something you want to grab. On the other hand, TSI shares. TSI can make a lot of money um, over the course of the game, well, with its stock value increasing and everything. So those aren't terribly bad. So like something like this, where you're getting a TSI share, well, TSI automatically starts at 100 bucks a share in the full game. Um, so. For 20 bucks, you're getting a five buck income plus an ability to drop a free base. That's that's a pretty potent thing, and you can get 120 bucks back. Um, it's not the Camden and Amboy. It doesn't let you, you know. It comes with a share and comes with the capability to do 160 bucks profit or whatever off of it if if you're. Uh, if you get it at the at the face value um there's not a lot of money in each person's hand though so there is the possibility if people start bidding too much not everything will sell and if the tsi doesn't sell out at least five shares it doesn't start so these guys and in particular something like this is kind of iffy it just gives you a claim it's got a decent income but uh yeah okay um one important thing that using these abilities to put the counter down does not close the uh yeah see this is an extra phase six ship too i bet it was a phase four ship that gets removed we're gonna we're gonna do that if that's what it is uh, let me see if i can find the optional wall i have trouble reading four and six uh, okay, so instead of five, I'm going to remove one of these. I don't think it will end it quicker. If it was not as phase six, which wouldn't make any sense at all. It's a phase four. I don't think it's enough to end things. Um, the way they say it here is... What? This guarantees at least one corporation must buy a phase six, assuming the game enters phase six. Well, that's also assuming that all the corporations kind of exist, uh, I think. Let's see. How many corporations do we have and how many permanent ships? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight corporations. Here. Phase three ships would still be available. They, they're what gets destroyed here. So you'd have six, 11, 12, 13 ships. No, it doesn't guarantee that, it doesn't guarantee somebody has to buy one of these. It would guarantee somebody has to buy one of these once somebody buys one. But when somebody buys one, all bets are off, right? The game does get shaken up a bit. Mainly it's that the people who are running two cheap ships now aren't making as much and now have to think do they want the bigger bigger ship that's pretty much what the difference comes to taking one of these out is not enough the thing that would be enough is say having this kill the threes but i've never gone to that extreme so just taking a single ship out not enough to do it in my opinion it's, i've done it every time uh, since the first game the first game i was like oh things don't happen let's try the option the option's not strong enough uh, it can be, but it usually isn't. It, when it is, it usually involves somebody raping and dumping a company, which <sighs> getting rid of a company in this is not always a good idea. It's not, it's not 1830. <laughs> you, you can't dispose of companies quite as easily. They're not as great a weapon. Um, in part because there's ways to avoid from uh, getting crushed by it very easily. All right. So I had to pick up a die so that I could uh, so that I could kind of randomize what I'm doing here. And now my first option is, hey, I can just grab this, which 
you know, gets 20% cash back on each run. Probably not a great idea. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I should have a bigger die. Um, but it's kind of skewed. So I'm going to do one through four. He's going to bid on one of those guys and otherwise on one of the others. Okay, so he'll go down for one of these, see what he's interested in. Uh, that'll be Vacuum Associates, and he'll put the 140 bit on there. Probably dumb. Probably want these things, but I did skew it in their favor. We'll do the same with player number two, and he's going to go for one of them. And I have my favorite. I like Ice Finder a lot. We're not going to guarantee on that. We'll go with Lucky. Lucky's kind of cool. He, uh, he, I think, gets a bonus on the rares to this company. And when exploring, he draws two tiles and chooses which to place. Or is that someone else? No, this is the guy who likes the rares. And he has the bonus. Uh, he gets to draw a second tile if the first one doesn't have rares. So he's good at getting rares. Uh, so then, yeah, we'll put, we'll put our $100 bid on Lucky. I know some people who put right off the bat a bigger bid because they know they want X amount of cash in there to be able to get a second ship or whatever quickly. Um, I am highly unlikely to do that. I haven't seen that it worked well. Uh, throwing your own cash away to try to get an improvement there. If it's a small amount, it makes sense. Uh, let me think what it would be. So, 100 bucks gets you enough cash to buy one of these two ships, either one. Getting a second ship would be another 100 bucks. Now, you have to factor in the 50% for runs and everything, and just trying to speed it up that way. And I'm not impressed with doing that kind of calculation. Uh, all right, let's look at the third player. He is also going in on the miners. He'll put his bid in on a torch. I'm gonna back away so that I can play with this die rolling game and randomly, you know, come up with where the bids are going to be. It's a little better than just fully assigning things because at least things go for bid. And I have, you know, I use some uh, of my understanding of the game to try and skew the results like I did here. Hey, I want this to be one through four. Uh, otherwise, I might have just rolled, you know, a 12-sided die. <laughs> so there's 12 companies. I don't think that's viable in this game. I've got one problem with my die rolling mechanism. Somebody could just buy planetary imports right off the bat. He did. It's not terrible, but you do that and boom, I can get something right away for a hundred bucks without, you know, any competition. Now, there are six of these. Two of them are bid, two and three. This is where we start thinking. Two and three are bid. There are four remaining. If I buy this, it's probably the only one I'm getting. So I'm only going to give him a 50-50 chance of that. Yeah, we didn't get very far, right? I'm only going to give him a 50-50 chance of auto-choosing that because he might get two of them otherwise. It's unlikely. He's not going to go for it, so then we're going to... I'm going to bid on one of those pieces of shit. Uh, I'll bid on the ass. such random things happen but again this guy he's going to take the 50 50 hey i may not get one if i don't buy this one one put a bit in on drill hound i guess he likes drill hound whatever player two said hey if i buy this i bet you player three will buy ore crusher because then he guarantees that he gets torch without a problem if he really wants it and this can't be bad obviously this isn't going to be there and then i get my second one as well and that's great and this guy who was God knows what he was trying to do because he put his bit there, but whatever. <laughs> um, uh, so we go to, and that's a pretty damn questionable place to put your money. <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't go out at all, which is weird. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that happens is Drillhound automatically sells for the amount bid on it and yeah this is uh, this marking here that's not like a poop stain or anything 
that's uh, I had this game with rubber bands around it. I thought I had changed everything over at some point or another. Apparently this one managed to have pretty good rubber bands the last time I played it and then went through Phoenix for uh, quite a while. <laughs> quite a while. Uh, so that puts us to player three, who if he buys this, and I'm going to give him a one through five on buying it, just outright, which he will. Because there is nothing too terrible about getting two of these at face value. That means player two does get the one he wanted. Lucky. And now we have a distribution of what I think are the most important things. They fell unevenly. We'll see. If one of these guys ends up doing very well in the game, they're not quite the showstoppers that they are in 35. That gives him an option on this. This is actually a pretty good deal. So I'm going to give him a 1 through 4 on that. And he'll go for it. Over here, player 5. Nope, player 1 gets this. Luckily, I have enough cash on hand. I haven't really been being careful about the uh, committing money or whatever. He gets this. And, let's see. Right, player 5 has the option on the robot smelters. He buys the robot smelters. He can't. He has 180 bid on the fucking asteroid company. So he, uh, I believe has to pass. Let me make sure. I don't, I don't think, I don't know when these shares are handed out. They may be immediately. Doesn't matter, the presidency hasn't been bought yet. Okay. Uh, so here's the interesting thing. This guy's got 200 bucks committed, essentially. He can't buy this. Over here, he's got enough money he can buy either of these. Um... The president's certificate is two shares. You only make 20 bucks off that. This, you've got a 60 buck thing that gives you 15 income, but you're not guaranteeing it's starting. Uh, there's not enough cash to start the TSI if he buys this. <laughs> Which would be interesting. Who would get the first crack at getting those extra two shares? That's a really interesting question. Um, probably not me, but I'm not sure. Let's look at some of these. So this guy's going to be making 10 bucks a round plus whatever drill hound pulls him. He's got 60 bucks. He's going to have to make quite a ways there. Um, because these guys aren't going to make money in the first round. Again here, you know, he's got a hundred bucks in reserve, which is pretty good, but he'd have to make 80. So let's see how long that's going to be. This guy here is going to be making 15 around. He has 130. Uh, so that means... He's going to need to make 50, which is essentially 60, which means it's going to take four rounds. Somebody might beat him to that. This guy here is making 30 a round, and he is going to have 120. That's 150. 150? Okay, so here's the problem. If I buy this, if I put a bid in on this, I actually cannot get this. Like, nobody will get this. Whereas if I get this, I think nobody gets this still. So these stay in limbo. But I get income. Uh, so yes, I am almost certainly going to go on this rather than commit 120 bucks to that because all I have is one of these. I'll give him a six to reconsider that. Okay. 
So he goes 160 bucks. That's 40 coming back. Okay. Nobody has the money for this. So it passes around. Coming back. Okay, so there's actually a protection here. And I found uh, I found the rule I thought wasn't there. Um, cash becomes uh, unallocated once a higher bid has been placed on the certificate. So uh, I thought that was the way I thought it was the correct way. But actually, player five does get to buy this. The PSI presidency just doesn't go out. Because all the things with uh, pending bids on them get resolved before the stock round uh, ends. And now we have two operating rounds with no TSI in place. Okay. <laughs> First thing that happens, as in all XXs, is we pay out the private companies. So 10 bucks there. These aren't privates. Uh, 15 here. Big 30 here. Yeah, I thought he wasn't going to get his cash. Now he's going to have... Well, that made the presidency maybe a possibility. Um, you know what? He's going to buy the presidency instead. I didn't realize how this was going to fall. So he pays uh, 20 bucks more. And gets 5 bucks more in income. But he gets to run this. He receives the TSI's president certificate. Other people get certificates as well. Um, and I'll put a certificate down with this just so I remember. But here's the thing. Until the TSI actually starts, I believe it's not allowed to operate. Jeez. Okay, I gotta find this rule. What it comes out as is the TSI shares aren't available to be bought until all of the things have been sold. So, first person to buy something has to be able to afford this. You can't just throw 100 in there. Same goes with the RSU. Um, because the RSU cannot. Um, but after the RSU, after the RSU uh, presidency is bought, that's what launching is, and that's defined here in launching private companies, uh, public corporations, versus making them active, which is when 50% of the shares. So this guy's going to get to run this probe, and I believe he runs it, and he gets the cash for whatever it finds as an addition to his income. So it's definitely a better move than these robot smelters. Robot smelters are kind of the worst card in the lot. And they're the one that almost always ends up not getting purchased if something's not going to get purchased. The question is always, um, do people want to get the TSI out? And, you know, if this guy hadn't bought the stupid planetary imports, he could have had two of these shares. Uh, as it stands, we don't know what's going to happen. All right. So I slapped down the private's income, and now we go to the miners. <coughs> and to do this, well, first of all, I get rid of all these player markers. Just, they have the used mines on the back. And there are, of course, no pending bids. Okay. Um, Privates go before the TSI probe does, and fast buck is first. Fast buck, well, he gets 15 bucks. He should have gotten it already. Um, now he starts. We gotta hand these things out. So like Torch gets this one, right? If I can find him. Um, so I'm gonna pull all the claims out. 
I'm gonna swap batteries. We don't have a lot of battery here. Uh, Fastbuck special ability is just getting me a 15 bucks. It's better than it sounds, but um, the one I really don't like is probably Lucky. He finds good stuff for other people usually. Um, I think uh, I especially like Drillhound, Ice Finder, and Ore Crusher. These guys get extra money for what they find. Drillhound's kind of cool because he can help find what he's looking for. But there's plenty of ice and, and ore around. He has to claim things that's a problem for him. Ice, ice is pretty good if you don't claim it, so. Okay, so you can get away with it without having to pay claims sometimes. All right, so Fast Buck starts here. He has nothing he can really do uh, for this turn, except buy a ship. Uh, how good a ship does he want? Well, the problem with a 3-2, he can go 1, 2, 3, and deliver whatever he finds here. The next time he can go 1, 2, 3, and deliver whatever he finds here. And then he can go 1, 2, 3. So that's not too bad. This limits him to 1. He's not particularly good at finding stuff. So I am going to buy a Type 1 spaceship. And Fastbuck, if he doesn't start with it, if nobody starts with extra cash, he quite often is going to be the guy who gets to the second ship the first. We're going to be making that decision on everybody else. I'll come back as to why anybody might have chosen a scout. Um, over here, for example, he's going to be coming out one, two, three, going back to his own base. And Fastbuck could do the same thing. If he doesn't like these two, he could go all the way around looking for better and better stuff. That one is a particularly hard choice because his special ability allows him to draw for another rare. Now, somewhere we have a disposition here uh, of how many have rares in them. So 30 mines, 30 tiles. That means just as many rares are on tiles. There's no tile with two rares. I think that's what it's saying. Um, he would love to find a tile with two rares. He's got kind of the most interesting call for one of these because rares are worth a lot of money when claimed. Uh, unfortunately, he starts over here and not near here where he would get an extra 20 bucks uh, per. His two ship though could transship for 30. So I think I'm still gonna go with the tug for him. I've seen some people argue for the three two ship for him. Keep going. Everybody ended up going with a tug. Um, there are no real torch, who's a little different from some of the others. Well he has an extra movement point. The tug is actually less of a pain for him. Lucky. Lucky likes to explore, but the thing is once he finds stuff and gets his claims down, he's going to want to deliver it, you know, so if he gets good finds here, he can bring them there. Likewise, here he could even, you know, deliver nickel that's claimed pretty cheap. Actually, nickel's kind of cool because it, nickel's, according to this chart, nickel is the only thing that doubles, oh no, yeah, nickel is the only thing that doubles up. Um... Now that's going to be expensive to haul two nickels. You may not get a ship very quickly, a second ship very quickly because of it, but it also has a good opportunity for pulling stuff in with just one ship. And then he might actually be able to get a level two ship. Those are hard to get though for these guys. Uh, getting a second level one is pretty easy. Now that TSI gets to run, it comes out of here. It only runs this probe, and all it's able to do is explore now. What does he want to do for exploration? That's the good question. He's got the presidency of the TSI. So, you know, he thinks he'll probably end up having the edge in TSI shares. He's got a little extra bonus money coming in on top of his 20 buck income. Uh, so, where would we want to go? Well, if we get really lucky, we can run to there. So we're gonna run, one nice thing about the probe, we don't have to land back at a base. You only have to land back at a base if you're making a delivery. So he can go in here. Now, he's not 
Lucky or Drill Hound, but it can get them in the direction of uh, finding the big bonus on the rares. Instead, he finds an ice. Yeah, great. Um, I'm going to go further in that direction because next turn I can go in the other direction. Coming down this way. And here we get an ice and a nickel. And we get some cash for that, which you got to look up. I think it's 10 bucks per hex. I argue he's making pretty good money off of the TSI here. 20 buck income plus 20 bucks, you know, basically each round for six rounds. That's not anything to sneeze at, to tell you the truth. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure he actually gets that, though. And here's why. Um, cost one additional movement point. The owning company or corporation gets $10 directly into its treasury for each hex explored by the ships. So I'm going to have to look to see if I can find that online. I think we used to play it that way. It might prevent him from wanting to ever start the TSI. Of course, there's plenty of time that, that it's not going to get started, but it also starts giving him a big boost in cash. Maybe too much of one. And the way it's worded, I'm not at all convinced that we were doing it correctly. So apparently we were. If you look in the Let's Play guide, um, it actually specifies this, that... Uh, uh, if the TSI is not active, then the owner of the T of the ST company flies the probe with the owner collecting the probe's exploration payments. So that's a pretty potent uh, reason not to let somebody just get the presidency without it floating. <coughs> For good or ill. Okay, that's the end of the first operating round. One thing that I really like about this game is one op operating round to go last operating round. It's very clear. The normal charts, I'm not sure which direction I should be going in them. <laughs> and we again, and it's always a fixed two operating rounds. Again, we hand out the money um, from the privates. Okay, that money's handed out. And very clearly, uh, here we have 160. There are people who have enough cash to buy the robot smelters. Do they want it? Well, the game can't continue without it. And they're not getting as much income as they could, but with two of them holding that possibility, there's the interesting situation of, well, maybe I don't want it that badly, and I'll let the other guy have to make the decision as well. Uh, so there might be an interesting little game of chicken that goes on there, because this is a significant increase in payment. What's powerful about it, though, is the $100 that you're paying for the TSI, for, out of this that covers the TSI share, that is sort of um, uh, profit because you'll be able to sell this for 160. So you're paying 60 for a 15 income plus the special ability. However, you're only paying 20 for this special ability, and I'm not sure a claim for 60 bucks. Yeah, that's not bad. That's the base price for a claim, but you're paying it kind of out of pocket. Not necessarily. It could come out of the company. So. I don't know eventually some company all right so we go uh back to fastbuck we forgot his money again there's like one time in the game when it's important that we don't forget his money at that which is when he's falling into the asteroid league um and we run him he's got coming out of here well two will take him to there he doesn't have anything terribly special Oh, actually, he can't carry... St oh, no, he has a speed of three, yeah. Two takes him to here. That's pretty good. Um, I will pick up the ice. Well, I'll pick up both. Right? And deliver them. Might as well. I could do the transshipment instead, right? Uh, I think... I don't think I have to actually pick this up. I think I just have to hit it. Uh, I'll look that up as well. So, he makes 70 bucks. That gets split 35 and 35, and eventually, you know, probably claim the rare, increasing its value quite a bit. So 35 and 35. Uh, so he'll take 35, and he'll take, we'll just give him 35 as well. <laughs> I'll do the math in my head right now. Um, 
Now, I could actually... I think I can buy the claim at this point. I don't think I can buy it. I think I have to... I, I don't think I can buy it before I operate. All right. It appears to be sequential here, this other purchase, so it's actually after spaceship purchase. So now I could buy, and I have 60 bucks. So I am going to put a fast buck one here on the rare. And now next turn I make 30 bucks more, which is good cash, of course. I've thrown away, you know, <laughs> The money that, uh, uh oh, gotta swap batteries and work. The money that uh, I was trying to hoard for a ship. Um, let's go to the next guy, Ice Finder. And we're gonna run out of this battery too, because this barely had time to charge. Well, he's here. Uh, his ship isn't fast enough to get him here. He can make more money off an ice there, but uh, we will go here first, I guess, right? That seems not unwise. Finds a rare. That was two movement points. Third gets me back. And I'm only holding one thing. I get 40, that's gonna be 20 and 20. And I don't have the money to claim that, which is okay for this turn. But very shortly I'm gonna to need to claim that. Oh, this is Drill Hound that I put it on. It should be Ice Finder that I put it on. Which means I fucked up. Uh, Ice Finder. So I need a whole bunch of these. 20 in Ice Finder. 20 in his pocket. And we would like to be delivering ice. We may try here and see, because good stuff happens if we can find ice. That brings us to three, which is Drill Hound. Drill Hound is up here. He's good at finding what he likes to find. I don't know which direction to go, but I'm probably not trying to deliver nickel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this space. That's one, two. I find a rare, so I have to keep it. I hold both things back where I'm going for three. And I make 70 plus 10 is 80, so I make 40 and 40. And this game has a lot of uh, corporate and private charters, so we'll be taxing my... Uh, my, my currency sat here. Do I want to claim something? I don't have enough cash. See, fast buck is good. He <laughs> really is. Uh, or crush it down here. Well, he's got to head this way. Nickel's easy to find. So we hope we find... Oh, 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 oh. Each guy also gets 10 bucks for what they searched. This goes into their treasury and does not get split with the player. Okay. Or Crusher is going down one, and that's one reason for the fast ship. Comes here, he does not find what he wanted. So, we'll haul back 60 bucks worth of stuff, which means we're making 30 and 30. nickel it's pretty easy and then 10 bucks more for himself not enough money to buy anything let me make sure nobody 25 50 and nobody else had the cash to buy either okay uh, to claim things that puts us now on torch torch is interesting he has more movement 
Torch is up here. He would love to find ice going this way. So he's going to move into that hex. And spend two for his search. And he does find an ice. Chances are he'll find something. He can't, he can't search again. Uh, two, three, four. He'll take it there. If he searches again, he can't deliver. And he wants to deliver. Okay. So he gets 30, 50. Plus 10 is 60. So 30 and 30. It's not bad either. And then 10 more bucks for discovering a hex. And now we go to our friendly Lucky. Lucky. Lucky's so weird. He gets to draw two and choose what he gets. Um, delivering ice here is really easy. So I think that's what we're going to aim for. We're going to go heading towards the transshipment point, though. Because I think if we hit that, we get the 20 bucks. So I flip over two and I choose. Well, this one's clearly better. So that was two movement points. I pick up both. Because it's as good as the transshipment. And I go next door. But this is actually going to be potent because I can deliver it up here. About as good as the ice is. I can't complain. So I'll be doing a one, two, three run. Of course, I won't be using Lucky's ability anymore. Um, and I have to get two claims for that to be worthwhile. Okay, so now I get uh, 20 and 20 is 40. And he'll get 10 more for the discovery. Doesn't give him enough for a claim. He may want to search some more rather than just keep doing this haul. Uh, the ice hall can make more money. I don't know. Because here he can make 30 and 30, which is not bad. But and I, a lucky ice hall can do better than that. And I put the extra chip back in here and shuffled it up. And now the TSI gets to go. And it has its probe. Well, where did we want to go? We want to search those two hexes, I guess. Unfortunately, you know, it would be great if we could get Lucky down there doing that. Lucky can't be attached to the TSI, though. <laughs> Here's fast one goes there. This one. And then the one next to it. Hey, we found a rare. That's cool. Can't claim it yet, but nobody's really fighting us. And we get 20 bucks for the things we found. That pushes us into the stock round. And now we have to make the decision. Priority. Is it really? Geez, I don't know if the priority is actually there. Um, I don't think it is. I think Tunnel Systems was the last thing I actually bought. This was the last thing purchased, but this was the last thing that was just bought um, outright, wasn't it? Vacuum subsuits, he put a bit on. So I think first player is actually over here. He has to make the decision, you know. If he doesn't buy it, it forces him to either buy it or leave things blank. Uh, if he does buy it, if either of them buy it, it opens everything up. TSIs are now started. RUs become available. If somebody buys the presidency of the RU, three more companies become available. So the whole game can kind of break open here, except everybody's got butt kiss for money, and they have to start it at if they want to make money off of it, they have to have $335 in hand. Nobody's got that kind of money. So, really what people are doing is, hey, do I want to spend 100 bucks for a TSI? I think this is still worth it for the reasons that I outlined before. So I'm going to pick it up. 
I don't think it hurts. And the argument is somebody could presumably start it with, you know, 130 bucks or so. But then they're just sitting on the presidency of it and not actually starting it. Another option that they can take, though, once we get to phase two, is they can convert someone to it. The RU almost always, somebody has enough money that they float it before that. Uh, so pretty much what's going to happen is people are going to buy up TSIs if they have 100 bucks for it because it automatically pars at 100. You have no option there. And hey, I get to hold on to my company a little longer. Um, this stays as part of the TSI. And I gotta throw it out with a thousand bucks on it to play with as well. And we just bought. No, we didn't just buy. We just bought one of these. So now we've got a better chance of holding on to our company. Um, things could have been dangerous if this guy had two shares. As it is, things are pretty spread out. Everybody had enough money. They bought themselves a TSI share. That sells out the TSI. So it goes up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And we're going into the first operating round of this new turn. Um, important thing to note, the probes over here, there's a pile of money here, a thousand bucks. They can buy a lot of ships. Um, TSI is kind of a weird company because it's got, I think the probe doesn't count against its, uh, oh, it does count against one of its four ships, okay. Um, so it can only actually buy three of these to begin with. But nobody had enough cash to turn the RU around. If you play the smaller number of players, it's quite possible somebody has enough money together that they could actually float the RU or at least buy it, the presidency, and make sure that nobody else is going to get it. <laughs> of course, when they do that, that opens up opportunities for other people to lay claims on companies that they like. Um, out of the next tier, the second tier of companies is pretty good. That's uh, VP, LE, and MM. These outer guys... They're not as bad as the final tier of companies in 1835, but they're definitely weaker. Um, and RU is very powerful. TSI, its only real advantage is the time that it gets to set up beforehand, but it also gets the cut capability to run hard and fast with a lot of little, a lot of little ships. It almost always starts out this way in six players, which is that you know, not everything sells out, and because it's very hard to get the money to align just so that you get everything. People tend to bid higher than I did as well. Like, you know, they actually raise the price of things. They don't pay face value for everything. It's just the nature of the world, right? Um, but in, uh, for one thing, the miners almost all go for above face value. So there's almost always something left behind. It's almost always the company that was left behind. And then after, uh, maybe in the next stock round or whatever, everything break, almost always, it, everything breaks open. And there's enough cash that people can buy it. So it's kind of important who has the first player for that, uh, which is why that was kind of a big deal. It stayed in the same place just because of the ordering. Hey, he bought this, everybody else bought one thing, and now there's nothing left to do and not enough money to do it. So. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let uh, my battery charge overnight before I come back to this and uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get through the two operating rounds I probably won't be zooming in quite as much on what's going on notice all the claims uh, all the um, used mines have been removed and fast box claims been regenerated. And back to the air conditioned portion of the house. Air conditioned in the sense that it's underground. <laughs> but it really does feel like air conditioning. It's nice. Okay. Uh, let's grab one of the operating rounds and get that out of the way. First thing, as always, we pay out the private. Fine, fast buck. One of the problems with this game is that these are all black. It's you it's standard, you know. The number marker at least helps you find them a little bit easier. But unlike the flags for the big corporations, it's not really trivial to find them. Um, that is generally the case with the minor companies, except for in things like 18OE, 
over there where there's kind of minor companies that are real companies, I think. Uh, okay, so where's Fastbuck going to go? Well, he's got this claimed mine. He would like to get there. The problem is if he searches somewhere else, he will not be able to pick this up. So I invested the money. I have to, I, I might as well drive through this and, you know, I'll grab the ice too. So I'm only using two of my three movement or one, two. And so that's, uh, I produce a hundred bucks, which is 50 to each player. Well, <laughs> you know, um, I'm not going to put a used mine there because I'm going to look, do I have enough for that mine? Making an extra 10 bucks. So here's the question. I am almost at a ship. Another ship would help me a lot. So I am not going to buy the other mine yet. I'm going to take a little hit on my current income with the hopes of getting the ship quickly. I will automatically have enough for a ship next time. If I spend 60 to get on another claim, I will not. And there may be something else I want to claim when I have a second ship, and I don't want to waste both my claims on that. Uh, Ice Finder. Ice Finder is over here, and he has not... Oh. He actually should have drawn a second tile. We'll pretend this didn't happen, you know, that I did it right. I forgot. He and Drill Hound both have the bonus. It's just Drill Hounds is a bigger deal because uh, rares are harder to find. So what's up with Ice Finder? Well, he does not want to go here. This is probably his most important space. So we'll go in there at 1-2 and look for ice. And the first one does not have ice. So the second one applies and he gets this piece of garbage. Now, unfortunately, I only have one movement point left. So I have to pick this garbage up and haul it back. And this is why this is a better place for 20 bucks. I still don't have enough. 20 bucks is 10. And 10. Um, I still don't have enough <coughs> to buy a claim on this rare. Not that that's necessarily what I want at this point, but at least that would improve my, my cash flow. Um, but then I'd have to just run this garbage. So this is actually where I put the claim bigger jump in money if it came to that. Um, let's see about Drill Hound. Drill Hound's up there. He's got a rare. He would like to find a second one. He would like to find it right here so he could go one, two, three. If he does that though, he's not producing income this turn. Oh. Forgot about, uh, well, let's, let, let me think about Fastbuck because maybe he does want that claim. Eh, uh, no, an ice isn't worth claiming anyway. Um, ice finder also discovered a hex. That's what this 10 bucks is for. Uh, drill hound, does he want that claim? Or w w what does he want to do here? So this is not a bad run with a claim on it of 50, of 60 plus 40 is 100, 50 and 50. That would give me the ability to run another ship immediately. Oh. Uh, I think I am not gonna explore. I'm gonna just run this and get that amount that I said. And ooh -hoo, we ended up with the first. So, oh, no, it's 40 and 40. It's 80. That's not enough to get another ship immediately. It's still a pretty good run, so we're going to go with it. <sighs> yeah, no 10 bucks. I don't, I don't have the extra movement, because if I move somewhere else... You know what? Without being able to get the ship, I'm not going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explore, but I'm going to explore this hex... I get the extra 10 bucks that way. And it's a rare, which means it stays. I pick it up and I come back with 40 bucks instead of the 90 bucks that I was going to come back with. 
40 bucks means I get 20 and we'll get 10 for the and 20 and now I have 80 bucks in pocket that's enough for me to claim something I am going to claim something uh, 75 70 60 I'm going to drop a claim here which is unused but that doesn't really matter <coughs> um, it slows me down from getting that other ship I would get another ship next time you know what let me let me get that money back let me get that money back I want the ship 75. Um, I want the ship because I can run something between both of these. These these at 40 each aren't bad. So, yeah. I can't get the ship just yet, but next time I will have enough cash to get the ship. So, we'll do it that way. It's always hard for me to make these decisions. Um, and it's been a while. Okay, ore crusher. Ore crusher doesn't get bonuses finding ore. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this hex and I find no ore. Uh, well, that's one, two. Got to go back with it. And I get 40, which is 20 and 20. 25 in each. And I get 10 more bucks on Ore Crusher for discovering a space. He has 50, 60, 70 bucks. He could drop a claim. He would rather drop claims on Ore. Although this is as good as any Ore he's going to haul. The problem with this is, well, he could just run one, two, three. but he has the opportunity to get a second ship again. Seems like a better deal. Kind of seeing everybody do that. The only claim that was dropped was that early one by Fast Buck because he had the extra money. Um, yeah. So, it, it, yeah, spending the money is the question. Okay. So that puts us to five, which is Torch. Torch is kind of cool, always. Torch likes delivering ice. And he can go one, two, three, four, getting an exploration hex. And if he finds an ice here. Okay, so here's the thing. As I move into this space, I have to choose whether I'm picking this up or not. I do, because it's worth 40 bucks, and I'm probably not going to find anything better than that. I can't jettison it or anything like that. I have to carry this with me for the rest of this trip. And then I get lucky, pull another ice. So I have hauled 50, 80, 90, 100, uh, I'm sorry, 70 and 50 is 120 because Mars mining is so good. That's a great starting location. So 120 says I get 60 in my pocket. And Torch actually gets 70. Call it 75, 100. Enough for a ship. However, he could also claim these things, but they're ice. Ice doesn't really need to be claimed all that terribly much. So I'm going to buy myself another ship, but what do I want? Well, I can haul this, and I still have an extra movement point, but that doesn't really do me any good. <clears throat> um, so, I'm, you know, if I'm just hauling this ice, I'm losing my advantage, but I don't see a real reason to get a scout. I don't really like scouts. There's a reason that the tugs are more expensive in every case later on. The only thing with scouts right at the beginning of the game is sometimes you can't hook up the good resource that you want to hook up. Okay. So 
So that's Torch. And now we go to Lucky. Get Lucky! Uh, well, Lucky could haul a couple of nickels at 30 each. Everything except for a double uh, a nickel only mine is going to be worth at least 30. And with Lucky, I think I would rather look for other things. So I'm going to go in here for one, two. I find this. And now I have to bring it back. Bring them both back. That is worth 50. I don't, oh, I actually get to pick two chits. Lucky does not, it, Lucky's not one that says, no, I don't want that. I don't want this. So I will pull this in for 50. That's going to give each a quarter and 10 bucks for exploration to Lucky. Lucky's got enough money he could claim something. <clears throat> um, uh, or I could probably get a ship next time. I am going to actually buy the claim with Lucky. I don't know. See, the problem is I want to get here and explore that and then, you know, have an ice there. which means it's not the time to buy a claim. But if I'm just going to run this and make money, it is the time to buy a claim. Yeah. Sometimes you want the scout with lucky, I guess. I don't know. Um, you know, what? Something that constantly delivers to or something that but has to pass one for one run or something that consistently only delivers one good but doesn't have to ever pass. That's that's the question. And I still feel like this is the better choice. Okay, let's go to the TSI. Well, TSI now owns the probe. They have a ship to run. Uh, what do they want to do with this piece of shit? I could try to figure out a route right away or and these guys aren't going to be able to reach here until well they could with a scout um what happens with the scout one two three four five it's not terrible um so i think i'm gonna search out these two spaces with tsi Using the probe, although this is intriguing. All right, let's take this one. We get an ice, and let's go here. And a double nickel. The company gets the money now, not the player. <clears throat> I don't have to buy a ship. I could keep running the TSI probe. I believe. Let me check the rules on that. There's a reason that I might want to do that because I get a 20 buck income off this. Of course, I don't get the TSI probe income anymore. Thing is with, and I have to whisper, I forgot and upset my leech. Um, the thing is that uh, TSI, I have 30% of it. If I don't run it, I'm not going to be making I'm not going to be making the gains in stock value and everything that I need in the long term. On the other hand, everybody is leeching off of me. And this guy especially so. And <clears throat> I don't know for sure which one works out better. But it seems like I want to get the shares moving around um, a little bit more quickly, I guess. And I kind of think about it. If I just run the probe, I'm getting 20 bucks a turn. In stock value alone, I'm getting 39 for each payout that I make. Uh, 
since I'm paying out zero, I actually do go back. So I'm losing money off of these. So yeah, I do want to buy. I do want to buy because uh, I have more shares than anyone else. Uh, I do want to buy spaceships. How many do I need? <sighs> I'm not thrilled with this. And I'll still have the probe, one, two, three, four, that I could scout that out before I move. This just doesn't seem that good. If I claim this, it's worth 70, though, which is better than nothing. Jeez. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to buy myself one scout. And then what else can I haul? One, two, three. I could haul some of this crappy ice. Maybe discover some of this shit out here. One of these. And I think that's all I'm gonna buy right now. That leaves me room to buy a type two train ship. So that cost me 200 bucks. That 200 bucks crashes the TSI presidency, and that's the, that's the reason I wouldn't want to do it possibly, is that's a lot of income I'm getting rid of. Uh, I also may want some claims and stuff, or a base. I can't buy a base of refueling, but I can buy some claims. Um, so the only real claims I can see picking up are nickels. And right now I can run my freight ship for that and then see what develops. So I think we're okay with this. Um, RU is now available for launch. And if somebody buys the presidency of the RU, these others then also become available. Stock value went back. We go to the second operating round. It's paid out. All the mines are unspent. Flip back over. And we're back at the start with Fast Buck, who has his cash on him now. What's he running? He's running a 3 2. Looks to me like he's going to run for 50 and 50 without any extra space. a hundred bucks and this is where it's important that's the last of these now ships are 200 bucks or 175 for the cheaper ones that you're more likely to get what flavor do I want um, I'm just gonna take another hauler and hope I get lucky here worst come to worst I can do the transshipment and I did not explore because I'm just running that No extra cash there. And that puts us to two. Who is down here not finding ice. Very unhappy about it. I guess he'll go to the space below next to the nickel there for two movement. That one did not have ice. He doesn't get it. This one did have ice. However, since that was two, he has to go back with it. And all he gets is 40 for his run, which is 20 and 20. But since I explored, we make that 30. Running low on 75 on 25s, so I'll cash in 100 there. Okay, uh, doesn't have enough money to buy a ship. I could increase my income by 10 here, but if I do one, two, three, that's even better. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay 60 bucks to drop an ice finder flag here. And that will let me make more money overall. And actually I made more. I forgot a ice finder. I make 10 more. So I uh, made 5 more per character. Remember, I mean, there's so many special abilities in this game that it is harder to play solo than some of the others. Uh, three. And sometimes it's hard to remember even when you're playing. Drillhound, he's set up with two things. Maybe he should have dropped his claim last time. Because here he's going to get, he only gets plus 10 per, right? 40 and 40 is 80. Well, 40 and 40. And no room to uh, no room to explore. But I do have room to buy at least one mine. So that's fifty. 60 bucks. Second one would be a hundred. I don't want to spend that kind of money. And I don't know which one to claim, but it doesn't really matter. Claim that one. Okay. And I'll be making a little bit more next time. <laughs> Working. And it feels like the phase two ships are always just out of reach. Like, you know, you just couldn't get the phase one, then the phase twos. It's really hard to come up with the money for them, and you're just stuck flying one ship. So it's a big deal to a couple of people who got to two ships each. It really is. They will be doing much, much better. And that's one thing that I like about Fastbuck. He has the capacity to get there pretty quickly, actually. Uh, okay. That was Drillhound. That means Ore Crusher's next. And he has no damn nickel yet. He doesn't get a bonus. I could just do an exploration and hope for nickel. <laughs> Nickel's pretty common. So, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna explore that hex and hope for the best. No. And all I get is 10 lousy bucks. However, I can buy a claim. I mean, hauling these is almost as good as hauling a big nickel with a claim on it, so. <coughs> even, even with my bonuses. Oh, but it's obviously, this is not the optimal nor the expected situation here. Uh, five is Torch, Torchy. Torchy is running a three, two, one, two, three, hauling the ice there. I will leave these up here. Oh, so there's some other counters in the game. Let me show you how those work. So I got a 30 and a 50 ice that I'm hauling on this ship. Now, I do have to remember that I'm hauling them here at plus 20 each because there are no, the numbers just match the numbers on the counters. The other ship is a four. One, two there. Maybe I can get more ice there. Maybe. I find a double nickel. Uh, so now the question is whether I want to search more. Take my 10 bucks for finding that hex. I think I'm just going to deliver the 40 extra bucks there. And so now here I have 40, uh, sorry, 50 and 70 is 120 plus 40. 
is 160. So it's 80 and 80. 80. 100. No. That's not cheap too much. 100. 105. And 80. Now I have enough for a ship that no longer exists. Uh, I don't know that I want to claim these nickels. However, claiming one of them isn't terrible. Oh, I have tons of ships. So I will get 40 back and drop a claim on one of these nickels. They're good nickel. See, here's the problem. There could be an ice there. No, screw that. We're not going to claim it. We're probably going to claim the good ice. <laughs> that nickel is so unimportant later in the game is kind of the thing. So that was 68. If I found it. And this gives me flexibility towards the next ship. Okay. And finally, last but not least, good lucky. Who hasn't been all that lucky, but at least he has an ice here. I could do one, two, three. But I think I chose not to do that by not buying a claim. Um, which means I think what I'm doing is one, two, three. I'm trying to find another ice. And I do. I think I wanted this one. Hard to tell. Okay, at this point I can drop a claim. I didn't make any money. Just 10 bucks for this. 75, uh, 60. I drop a claim. I'm gonna drop it on the good one. <laughs> uh, actually, one, two, three. yeah, I don't have the extra move for there. And then next turn, I'll make some money off that. Back to TSI. TSI at this point. <laughs> Forgot to unflip them. It is cool. The counters are different on the two different sides. So you can tell whether they're not just by the indent. You can tell by looking at them whether they've gone or not. Uh, it's a little hard when there's only one company on the board, though, to be sure of that. TSI's sitting here. And this is blue. It is their base changes there. So I run my ship sequentially, which means I could do one, two, three, four, and discover this hex, but I have that little five one there. Uh, I am going to pick up this rare. Nah. I'm liable to find something as good as it. One, two, three, four, and then I'll go to here. There's a good chance that I'll find something that's as good as that rare. But I do not. Okay. And when you start getting to the major companies, it becomes a little bit more important to mark these suckers. And then let me get my 10 bucks. Because it doesn't really hurt me to get it out now. Uh, all right. Now I have a 3 2 that I was going to run here, I think, uh, which is 2 30s. And this also marks that the ship is done. That it's, uh, shit. What's on the back of this? 30s and 40s. It's just finding the damn chits is hard. But when doing it on camera, I feel like I kind of have to. And the last thing I have is my probe, which, this is a very interesting piece. However, there's this as well. It probably goes four. See, I can explore two spaces here, so I'm going to do that, get the extra cash, and get more hexes explored. Now, what's kind of funny is exploring these hexes, unlikely letting Ice Finder do it, I'm more likely to get garbage in them. 
Ice Finder saying, yup, you found nice stuff for me. That's 20 bucks in the TSI. And now my deliveries is two ices, someplace nothing special, and the nickel. So that's going to be eight, 80 bucks. I might as well pay it all out. And you got ones for transshipment as well at eight bucks a share. So everybody's going to get paid out at eight bucks a share. Since it's a full payout, <laughs> it goes two boxes to the right, <laughs> which seems extreme. Um, I like the ones that base it off the stock, off the uh, stock valuation instead. Uh, so this guy's going to get 24 bucks, but wow, look at the stock value increase. This is why you don't want to just run that probe and not make any payout before I head up for the morning. Uh, this is the point to notice. Okay. The high stock valuation that comes off the TSI, he's up to 126 now because he's sold out, etc. There may be enough money that someone can float the RU. If that happens at this point, there's no opportunity for anyone to float it as a growth company. The RU is a growth company, say, especially off of Torch here. Could be really, really potent in terms of starting location, etc. And the RU's got some neat abilities as well. Um, basically, it gets claim, its first claim for free, and then it can pay for two more. So it can either accelerate its claim thing or just get them cheap for without paying much money, which is pretty cool. And then, I don't know, Torch isn't that great. One ship that gets a little bit extra movement. As he's better as a uh, as a private, but that, that's there. But anyway, that's the reason RU doesn't generally start as a growth company, is that somebody can come up with enough money. So this guy, for example, has two shares. That's 252. I don't know. It looks like we're looking around 300 bucks or so. Uh, I don't see anybody with enough money to really float it with cash in this iteration. Which may mean that I'm not making as much money as I thought. It also may mean that everybody holds off, but the TSI is likely to buy another train. He's getting close to the money. He doesn't have room for another one. And Ore Crusher can't buy it because we haven't entered phase two yet. So things become a lot more frozen. He just doesn't have the cash to do it. So it could end up that the opportunity to start RU as a, uh, uh, as a growth company might actually happen here.